I'm trying to intro a show. Well, we're, tr we're trying to intro the show here, and he's he's doing something. Uh, Stuart, what are you uh, what are oh. you doing? What are you doing? Sorry, I didn't see you guys there. I was too busy, you know, modeling because you know, this is awesome. Modeling. Yeah. These jokes don't get any better. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I, I know. But this is tr this is uh, Trekkers Top Ten. Welcome to it, Commander. What are we doing today? I don't even know. Top 10 Trek models slash miniatures. These are the, the pre-CG models and, and, and things that they use to make those amazing space effects. Um, we thought it was time to really look at some of the amazing work. Um, and there's one right there. But but the ones on the show are like six foot. So like as tall as people, you know, really, really incredible sized ones. That is, that, that is, that is not as big. Um, but yes, what is your top five, Stuart? But well, as you guys all know, I'm a model builder, so I know, know a little something about mm. physical models. Mm. Um, so this one was a fun one for me to do. And let's just get right into it. Number five for me is the Klingon Bird of Prey. This is a cool model, very detailed. Mm. Uh, you see a lot of behind the scenes shots where they have it upside down. And this actually had motors in the wings that the wings mm. could move. And it was a very detailed, awesome model. And like you said, fairly big. I mean, I would love to have one at studio scale, but would you though? Insane. That's a lot of that's a lot of your room being used. It's like the chandelier sized. If if I had enough room, I mean, okay. that'd be awesome. Because like I said, the detail on that thing is incredible. I would just like to actually see the physical model up close. Uh, um, but so that's number five. Number okay. four for me is the Enterprise D. Mm. Again, this thing is massive. And the amount of detail on it was incredible. Um, Andrew even said, you know, he wanted the, the another the photon torpedo launcher facing rear, and he wanted to just draw the, draw it, pencil it in on the model at the last minute, but he, he was told not to. So it could have been canon officially, um, but an incredible model. And they had a few different scales for this one, and this mm -hmm. is the the big one. Yeah. I mean, I forget how much it sold for at Christie's auction, like a lot, million plus, million and a half. Um, so it would just, I can't imagine a model that, that huge. Um, now again, I'd like to see it in person to get some photos of it and whatnot, but yeah. you know, cool. Okay. So number three for me is probably the, one of the last physical models ever built for Star Trek. And that's the big enterprise E that they built, um, which they did a few scenes with, uh, um, as when we talked to John Eves few scenes in the opening of uh, First Contact, re uh, the actual physical model. And then, of course, it got dropped and they went for CGI. So, again, at least one, at least the last Enterprise is yep. represented in physical model form. And they should do that with every Enterprise regardless, I think, if they do do another Enterprise. Um, let's make it a physical model. You know, just use for CG a, for some shots. Just for a couple of shots at least, yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's... Number three. Number okay. two for me is the Enterprise Refit. Ah. Hmm. Again, an excellent model. Great detail. Andrew uh, Prober did some great work on that, especially with the well, the the, the the team did a lot of great work on that with the painting <laughs> and the you know the the pearlescent colors and just the Aztec looks great. The detail on it again is incredible. And to see sh shots of it behind the scenes where it's in the dry mm. dock huge dry dock on stage and have it pulling out um just to film that i mean they did an incredible job and one of my favorite models absolutely but not number one because number what? one is oh you want to say something well i was gonna say that must have been some as, as trek fans to stand there on sets watching this new better than any other enterprise you know detail wise you've ever, ever seen kind of a dry dock and it's just like this is really happening that must have been an incredible Incredible moment. Even if it took you know thirty takes and a lot of a lot of rigging and things, it must have been like a really cool moment. Yeah. Absolutely, but that brings me to number one. And any guesses what that might be, Samuel? The Cardassian Galore warship. Wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, the the Kazon ship. <gasps> physical model is that is, is that, the, is that, is that, is that the small one or is that the bigger one the big big one it's the big one the big yeah. one yeah with those big bzz, 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 bzz. yeah it's really nice yeah. lots of nernies especially 90 yeah. percent nernies um and a point yeah 
Great choice. But no, no, serious. So, not uh, serious. Oh, not I was serious. gonna start my list. I thought we'd, I thought we'd finish. <laughs> Uh, my number one choice would, of course, be the TOS Enterprise, which the Smithsonian now has its hands on and are doing a full restoration of. I mean, it's iconic. It's beautiful. It's huge. It's kind of started the whole Star Trek franchise. It's still around, and they are making it. Well, they're restoring it again. It had a few makeovers hmm. prior to this, but they're bringing it back to its more of its original state, which is totally awesome. Um, I just wish that. They could have actually spent a little bit more time with the original one and not run out of budget, so they could lit, you know, lit the inner warp grills like he originally wanted to, do things like that. But fantastic physical model, and I'm looking forward to seeing it finished by the Smithsonian because it is the ship that started it all, and it is my absolute favorite ship of all time. So and is that something you might go and you know drive down or fly down to go see once it's up again? Absolutely, yeah. Have you ever seen it in person? I think a lot of our viewers. That I personally have not seen it in person. My uh, mother-in-law and M Sylvia's grandmother went to Washington about two weeks before they took it off display. So they got pictures of it still in its display case, uh, kind of at the souvenir shop where it was mm. at the end of the, the thing. Um, mm. So I got I got pictures of it in the display case right before they took it down for the restoration. So I think that's kind of cool. I wasn't you know physically there, but someone that I'm not close to was. I think that's awesome. That's very cool. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Gotta say, I I am I am surprised a lot by your list because you, you introed this by saying you're a, you're a master model maker. I'm thinking, ah, you're gonna pick some diamonds in the rough. I'm a master model. Ah, <laughs> I consider you a master model maker. That's what I consider. I mean, I'm a master something, but it's not model maker. Uh, yes. Um. No. Um. <laughs> But I, I was thinking we were going to you know, pick the, oh, the, the Janolan or some really nice, like, random ones. And then here you go and you picked some uh, pretty pretty similar ones to my ones. So I feel less impressive picking them now because I thought, oh. Sorry. That's fine. It's fine. Or even better, though, because I picked good ones. We both have... because it's funny, we, a lot of these, without realising, we end up having quite similar picks just because I, we think similarly, sort of, kind of, ish. My number five. And I thought this one you would not pick. Is the Enterprise Z? Did not think you were going to pick that one. Um, as you say, it was last of the film miniatures. And while the film used a big the boast for both uh, CG, most of the close-ups were the physical model, and it is beautiful. They really went all out. Um, and seeing some behind-the-scenes photos, there's a great uh, model channel out there. It's just ridiculous. There's so much crisp, crisp detail that just works so well. Um, I've played with the ship a lot in CG, but physically seeing the miniature is like, wow, that's a beautiful beautiful miniature it's nice they knew it was being phased out they still put every bit of effort into it and just really nice uh model um my number four is the burrell the bird of prey they knew they'd be using it for two movies at least they really decked her out massively detailed asymmetrical and hugely weathered it had a lot of personality a lot of character i think that's a big reason why fans reason why fans love this ship so much she was just used uh, so much, and and you know, fans just really got behind her. That's why I think she was used so much, even before the eras of CG, and then after. Um, just an incredible model, and like I say, the the moving wings. I mean, they don't use it very much later, on, obviously, but uh, very cool. A lot of a lot of internals. I think it's one of those ones you'd want to very. You'd, I think it's one of those ones you'd want to get very close to because there's lots of little details you probably didn't even see. Exactly. It's one of those models. Um, my number three is the space dock interior. Ooh, uh, it is nice. huge. It is absolutely huge, and I've always been so so impressed, especially with the movies, of how they can make models look miles and miles long. She had to be detailed and scaled properly, you know, to the windows to make it feel real and right, and just wow. I mean, Space Dog looks amazing overall with the outside, but 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 come on, the inside just from the concept to how they managed to realize it. It must have it must have turned out better than they thought. They must have been thrilled because it looks so incredible. I mean, I don't think anyone blinks an eye at those scenes. They're so well done, and it's like a miniature. It just well, it's incredible. You call it a miniature, but it was thirty feet long. That's what they <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's insane that what they'll do for these these kind of uh, scenes. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. So that's why it's my number three. It's just it's just amazing. My number two is the Enterprise D, the six-foot version seen in early TNG and Generations. This one was a beast. A beast. Um, a huge model, very expensive to make, 
but exquisitely detailed. Um, she's really beautiful, like I said, and I'm so glad they actually put the time and effort into her. It was more than just a TV model. I think they made her very much a filming cinema model, I think, the amount of detail they put in. Um, at least in those tile shots of, you know, TNG, we get really nice and close, she looks amazing, and then, again, Generations really got to see her shine. Uh, obviously, you then got the forefoot and the tomb foot, which changed the scales and looked okay, but when you really get close to this amazing uh, six foot, it's like, wow. It's just so smooth, so elegant, and so well done. Um, even though it was difficult to film with, very, very cool. And, you know, like I say, it was, I think that sort of set the tone for how good the show was going to be by putting the true effort into the model. Um, so that's my number two. And my number one, and I'm surprised you did it this way around, my number one is the refit. Specifically the Star Trek 1 version, because she is truly a work of art. Beautiful, elegant, and immaculate in terms of its paint job, with the shifting hues, reflective colours of the saucer, so much physical detail um, that made any shot with her look real. And then also the self-illumination in Star Trek 1 got a little bit less in, in later movies, but just so much, just, ugh, just felt real. And it makes it pop, and, and come on, those shots hold up even now. I think they'll hold up for a long time to come. They went beyond just <clears throat> models. I mean, I like some stuff in 2001, but those models don't look beautiful and sexy, and a lot of the stuff at the time doesn't. Star Wars is an exception, but you know, just, just really like, wow. Still holds up, and gorgeous model. Uh, so that's my number one. The Reef. Interesting. Yeah, I, I kind of see why you'd pick the refit mm. as number one as well. It was an incredible model, but come on, TOS has to be number one. Yeah, it's TOS. It started all plus. this craziness that we... I know, but it started all the craziness, and it's getting refitted by... It's in the Smithsonian. I mean, it's in the Smithsonian. It's a historical... It's, it's, it's <laughs> part of history, man. For the refit, it's just sexy. Yeah. Anyway, awesome list. Awesome list. You kind of surprised me with the interior of the space dock. That's incredible. I mean, I never would have even considered that for the list, but mm. yes, now that you've said it, absolutely. Yeah. What are your honorables, though? Because you went for, I guess we both went for mainstream. So, what's your honorable? My honorable mention is Deep Space Nine. Yes, I felt guilty about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a beautiful uh, model, yeah. very huge. Again, like, yeah. like the scale of these things is truly impressive. They're all lit, and I mean, and the, the camera work they do to show them off is just—it blows my mind how they did it. Um, but Deep Space Nine is an incredible design. Uh, I'm not a huge—it's not my favorite, you know, you know, look the Cardassian aesthetic. But yeah. I can't—I can't deny the detail that's in it and the 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 imagination that went into from Rick to make the Cardassian look. It, it is a cool look, mm -hmm. just not one of my favorites. Yeah, that's but it's same. definitely worth mentioning that model-wise, because we see that station a lot, and it's yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, I, I think my only problem with that model, in comparison to things like the D and the Reef, is that that has sort of different elements of you know, especially for the D, you know, it's got the lighter color parts, the saucer, it's got the engines, the blue, it's got all. Whereas the D, D Space Nine is like it's just basically those several elements repeated, and then you've got the interesting top and bottom. But there's very little color differentiation, oh. like radical different colors and things. So it's, I don't know, it would have been nice if it, like if it was um, you know, a, a, a Cardassian Federation hybrid with you know a, a dry dock ad addition that had a different color palette and I don't know. But that's a very going off tangent there. But um, yes. So what's your honorable mention? Go ahead. Shoot. Shoot away. Well, also, DS9 as one of them, because it's iconic. But I've got to, I've got to, I've got to call out a couple of cool ones. Um, I also put the TOS in there, because like you say, it's an original. Incredible. And the fact that it's loved so much is being restored now. Uh, the Ferengi model, the Marauder, because of the moving parts, he never really got to see and enjoy. But having done the full episode, we know what they look like. And just that was a very cool thing they tried to do, even if it didn't work. It's a lot to add to a model. Um, and then also the Centaur class, because there's a great story behind it. And please check out a full Centaur episode. It's, it's a great story. It's a very original kit bash. And it actually works really, really well. And so that's why I think it's a great physical model. Because just, like I said, the story, read up on it, go to Memory Alpha, check our episode. And it worked so well. You know, I just think that's a great, great physical model. So. Interesting. Yes. But I, I honestly, I am surprised. You are you are a Connie lover, yes. But I always like the refit. I I, I would have thought would would would, would tickle your fancy a bit more when it came to this, just because the amount of detail, the amount of budget, the amount of scale. I mean, that's a true motion picture 
feel. I'm surprised. That's why it was number two. They're kind of interchangeable. But they're kind of one, as far as I'm mm. concerned, ship was. But not so models. Really not tough. models. I know, I know, I know. I know, Completely but then, different. you know. <laughs> I know, but then they took the model and ILM, you know, changed the colors and whatnot for the other movies. And That's why I said I don't know. I, I know. I know you said first movie. I know that. But... I gotta say, the TOS is it's the Smithsonian. It's just it's it's iconic. It's it it had to be my number one. It had to be. I'm sorry, but you but you give me respect for putting it as my number one. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. You... Absolutely, absolutely. It's my number two. I have it here to, for my representation of model. For you know, it, it it holds a special place. Yes. And on that note, before we start fighting, that is it for this week's Track Yards Top Ten. Hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> Tune in for next week for another great Top Ten. This is Kamala Cocking signing off, and Captain Foley saying bye. Bye, guys. See you later.